Let's do this. Do it. All right, Daniel, here we go. The five, four, three, two, and one. Our right, folks, welcome back to the podcast. Very excited to have as my guest today, Daniel Packard. Daniel, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. You're I love welcome. I like uh there's so many um there's so much content out there and podcasts out there. They're trying to help people and they like to sugarcoat it. And I like the fact that your your podcast just it's got the word trauma right in there. You're like, let's just get to it. Let's and if you're and if you don't know you have trauma, which we all do, uh, then this isn't for you. So I'm glad it's not called like the how to be great podcast. You're like, no, we're doing it trauma let's do it so i appreciate the honesty because it's what the world needs more of and also i appreciate your audience because most of the world is in total denial that they're in trauma we, we can see it but to acknowledge you have it and have the courage to face it and want to do something about it takes courage so i appreciate your audience in advance for them even being on this show Thank listening to this show daniel is a uc berkeley mechanical engineer and ceo of permanent anxiety solutions who turns his painful battle with severe anxiety into a mission to develop an actual permanent solution for anxiety. After eight years of working with 3,000 people on five continents and over a million dollars of research and testing, Daniel and his team succeeded in reverse engineering an innovative process that solves any type of anxiety permanently with an astounding 90% success rate. Daniel is here to expose a little secret that mental health industry does not want you to know, and which explains a real reason your fear and anxiety won't go away. And then you'll learn the two breakthrough discoveries his team has made that will help you understand why being free of anxiety is not only possible, but that it can even be simple. Please welcome the CEO of Permanent Anxiety Solutions, Daniel Packard. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Guy, and yeah. You know, what we've done took so much hard work. And when someone like you reads my bio and I, I, I think, oh, yeah, we did that. That's incredible. It, it allows me to appreciate myself. So thank you for having me. And again, uh, your audience is who we want to be helping because these are people that are already aware they're in pain and they really want to do something about it. So it feels auspicious to be here with you and your audience. Awesome. So before we get going, share with the listeners where you're from originally and where you are currently. <sighs> Well, I grew up in the, the tiny little state of California in a small, unheard town of Berkeley, California. And uh, I grew up in the U.S., but about 10 years ago, um, for reasons which I'll explain with your audience, me being healthy and happy became my priority. And I thought, you know, the U.S. is pretty good for some things. You can go to, a, you, can go to you know, the store and the shelves are all full. But, man, this is a hard country. If you're a sensitive feeling person this country it's hard and so i left 10 years ago and every year i go live in a new country usually by the water and go do something fun so in the last i don't know two years i've been to estonia and uh england and uh now i'm just here in mexico because i also like to come back to mexico every now and then wow so let's jump in here how the heck did this start this all, all this start for you well, I want to be clear what the it is, because what we're doing is innovative and very valuable to your audience, I believe, because it's not the way things are done. So I want to be really clear in what the it is that we're doing, and then I'll tell you kind of how we ended up here. And the it that we're doing is we saw that not just for anxiety, but for really anything having to do with fear, that can also be PTSD, also procrastination, fear of failure, fear of social situations, really almost anything where fear is playing a role in it, we saw not only was, those were just different symptoms of one root cause, but we also discovered a root cause that allowed us to solve this, meaning you don't have to live like this forever. You can be 100% free of it completely. That's the it. And now your audience is going to know that's impressive because they've been managing and learning about and getting tips and tools. But if they're on this podcast, it means it's not gone. So the it that we're bringing to the world is that for multiple symptoms, uh, you can be free of it completely. And the way we ended up here was no accident. It, it was a crap ton of hard work and passion. And I, I, I use this word lightly, but almost destiny that we figured it out because it wasn't easy. We figured it out meaning a process that gets permanent results because growing up, my dad was a scientist and I grew up around science and, and the idea of, of building things and measuring things. And my dad said something to me very powerful. Uh, 
which was he said, you know, Daniel, if something's not working in this world or you don't understand something, you can invent something and make it better. And that's because he would go to the store, he'd go like to the electronic store or even the car auto parts store. And if the part that was available didn't work well, he'd go to his workshop and he'd make his own. He'd invent it. And I thought, to me, that was the coolest thing ever. He was like an X-Men, you know, the inventor. And I love this idea. Don't just settle for what's out there, make something better. And he also said to me, you know, Daniel, what I like about science is anybody can have a theory or an idea or a concept. He said, but the person you trust and the person that knows what they're talking about is, is the person that gets results. Like results really matters. And that idea of results mattering stuck with me. And so as a kid, I started inventing things to make things that got that would work and get results. I, I did it for my bicycle and my sailboat, and it was very satisfying. So I go to engineering school to get sort of professionally trained how to look at complex problems and break them down into simple solutions and then create things that work. And I got really good at it. Now, the good news was I got trained how to make machines work, but I wasn't trained how to make relationships work. I don't know if I, I, I don't know if they, if it was, if that was like hidden in quantum theory, I don't know, but I didn't know. So I, in my forties, uh, I fell in love and spoiler alert, we did not live happily ever after, uh, the relationship. I, I later found out I was being abused emotionally and verbally by a woman. And I, 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 I was too insecure and codependent to leave. It was my fault. I stayed totally. To it's on me. Now I know I'm the only person in your audience who would ever stay in a relationship too long, but that's what I did. And about two weeks after it was over, I was talking to a friend and they interrupted me. And normally that would have been fine, but all of a sudden my whole body was just filled with terror. And I thought, well, that's, that's not a good sign. And then the next day a friend was running late to pick me up and my chest tightened up and I thought I was going to die from fear. And I also had the fear of rejection. I started procrastinating. I started sabotaging everything. Anyway, I go to a therapist and they say, you have fear of rejection, anxiety, and complex PTSD. And I go, okay, well, that sucks. But like, let's, let's fix this. Let's do this. This is in and your so 40s. like your audience. What? This is in your 40s. Yeah. So the first time you'd ever experienced these symptoms. I probably had some fear of, re fear of rejection. Um, but yeah, this like cr the, the extreme of okay. the nine out of tens, but yeah, the anxiety and the complex PTSD, definitely that's was post relationship, but it made the fear of rejection way worse. Mm -hmm. And I went like your audience, I went looking for help and I spent 10 years, hundred grand, went to every therapist and psychologist and doctor and guru and retreat and app. And I did EMDR and EFT and CGT and IFS and MOUSE. Like I did all the letters guy. I did all <laughs> the letters from all the experts with letters after their name. And while they were well-intentioned and had some tips and tools to gain awareness, I wasn't free of it, man. And I, I, it was, that was its own hell when you can't be free of it because I felt more trapped and more broken. And I remember being, on the floor in my house in the fetal position, just terrified, partly terrified because I was always terrified, partly terrified because I felt like, am I going to be stuck here forever? And I, I kind of had one of those rock bottom moments where I just looked up to the sky in desperation and anger. And I just said, like, what, what do you what do you want from me, God, whoever? The heck is, what do you want from me? I've been working my butt off for 10 years. I did all like what, what, what? And I sort of I wouldn't say I heard a voice. But my inner self said what my dad said. If something's not working, you can invent something better and results matter. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, I looked at this entire trillion dollar industry, therapy, psychology, personal development, spirituality, a trillion dollars a year globally gets spent. Some of that money was mine. Some of that money was your audience. And they don't get great results. They don't solve anything usually. And I said, Maybe just for my own pain, but also other people's pain. I said, I'm an engineer. I know how to solve problems. So I started my own research company to see if it was possible. Could we find simple, fast, permanent solutions for this stuff? Instead of spending years, I didn't know if we could. Honestly, it was way harder than we thought. But after three years, I was one of the first test cases. I remember waking up one morning and I felt calm. Oddly calm. And I thought, well, this can't be permanent. This has to, you know, there's no way there's no, it's got to come back. It always comes back. One week goes by, two weeks goes by. It's been 10 years. 
I've been chill as a cucumber, no anxiety, no, no PTSD, no fear of rejection, just gone. And when my team saw that, they said, we did it. Like we figured it out. And I said, no, I mean, we figured it out for me, but it's not about me. It's about right, everyone hang else. On. Daniel, hang on. let me interrupt you for a second. Cause you're, you're moving ahead here. I want to catch this juicy stuff. So you decide you're going to do something. You create a business. The idea is what? The mission is to see if it's possible to reverse engineer a process so that a, in a, a short period of time, a person can be free, completely free of what's holding them back and a system that's reliable, meaning it doesn't just work for some people. It's, it's pretty consistent. That's what was, that was our mission going in. But holding them back, fear, anxiety. Okay. So what did you do? Who did you, did you hire psychologists? What did, what did you do to affect this kind of change in a sense? Well, the first thing we did, and this is not to disparage your industry. I, I, no, no, I, no. I, we looked, first of all, results. We looked at results and we said, all right, let's look at traditional therapies and modalities and psychology. And let's look at what's out there and available and see if any of this really works. And what we saw is none of it solved anything. It was tips and tools and management and insight, which is better than nothing. I'm not dismissing it, but it wasn't getting the job done. It wasn't solving it. So we said, well, wait a minute. We have to start from scratch. We have to we have to like completely look at this with fresh eyes. Otherwise, we may accidentally be kind of uh, get a limiting paradigm from the old guard. Mm -hmm. So we started from scratch and we approached it as engineers to look at this from an engineering perspective, mechanical. Most approaches are spiritual and psychological, and that's fine if you want insights and understandings to have understandings. But if you want to solve something fast, efficiently, consistently, you don't want spiritual or mechanical. What you want, we well, don't want spiritual or psychological. You want mechanical. So here's what I mean by that. Again, I share this with you. If you're choking and you can't breathe and two people walk up to you and one person says, Hey, I noticed you're struggling. Um, I think you have a real scarcity mindset around air. And I think you're really focusing on your lack of air instead of realizing you've seen the abundance and infinite of air that's out there. And also your ego is very attached to living right now and breathing. And that attachment is holding you back. So I need you to just let go and surrender to the possibilities. Or somebody walks up and goes, here's the deal. Mechanically, you have a bit of avocado stuck in your throat. I'm going to add mechanical pressure to your stomach. That's going to put reverse pressure behind the avocado. It's going to pop it out of your airway so air can get into your lungs and you're going to live. In that situation, what's, what, if you want to solve something fast, do you want spiritual, psychological, or mechanical? Well, it's a mechanical problem, which calls for a mechanical solution. Yes, yeah. exactly. Spirituality and psychology has a lot of theories about the problem. It's unresolved this. It's this is going on. And it points to what could be the issue. But to solve it, to solve it, you want a mechanical understanding. Because if, if somebody just walks up to you and says, you need to believe in yourself. You lack, you lack trust. You, 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 you know, you're not empowered. Okay. Th these are interesting things to talk about the problem, but that won't lead to a fast, efficient solution. How do I know myself and your audience has gone to retreats and read books where you get this theoretical understanding of the problem, but it does, it's not mechanical. So you can't truly solve it. So the reason we solved it is we were passionate about solving it. I can't stress this enough. I believe, and you tell me if I'm wrong, based on my experience, from going to a lot of experts and talking to people every day that go to a lot of experts. It seems like the experts are aware that what they're doing while helpful and give insights and management, that they're not solving things quickly. That's not the issue. To me, my experience was it didn't matter to them that much. When I went to my therapist and they couldn't help me that much, no, nobody said, you know what? I'm really sorry. I couldn't help you. They, they happily took my money and they just walked away. And I spent thousands of dollars. Nobody ever said, I'm really sorry. We didn't solve this. You're still in pain to us. It matters to us. If we can't help you, like we want you free of this. And the other thing, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, there's not a lot of measurement in this industry. 
they claim they're going to help you and help is a nice word and some help is going on. But when I went to my therapist and psychologist and even my trauma therapist, there was no real scientific measurement. Okay, here's where you're starting. We're going to track your results throughout the program. And if you don't get results, we're not going to charge you. There was none of that. There wasn't a passion for like real results. And I think, and you tell me if I'm wrong, why do you think that is? Why do you think there's not more passion and focus on a permanent solution and measurable results? What do you think? Well, first of all, I think it's, it's, we have to be careful when we're making sweeping generalizations about a whole community. You know, I, I don't think that's fair because I, I think a lot of people listening certainly going to say they're passionate about what they're doing. And there are ways to uh, measure results within therapy. And, and to be, to be fair, there are a lot of people out there, a lot of therapists out there who aren't educated in doing this. And there are a lot of therapists out there who, if they can't help you or, or are, unable to slash not educated enough to do that won't say anything though all those things are true but we can't sweepingly say that the whole industry all therapists aren't passionate about finding solutions aren't measuring things we, we First can't of all, you're that. right right i mean there's millions and millions and millions of, of, of well-intentioned people i interacted with probably 50 of them I talk to people every day who talk to have probably thousands and a hundred percent, right. It's I I'm not, I don't know what it is in, in each individual person's heart and there, and you're right. There are exceptions to what I'm saying. I'm pointing to a trend that I noticed. And the reason I'm pointing it out is not to disparage or dismiss the people that are out there on the front lines, like yourself trying to help people. That is not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to illuminate is that I saw a real gap between the level of expertise that was out there and fast permanent solutions and how that was the priority. And the reason it matters is because when I went to all these people and I didn't get permanent solutions, I ended up blaming myself, thinking it was my fault, and I felt more trapped and broken. That's what I'm pointing to, not to disparage Sure, the professionals sure. just to wake people because guy i spent a hundred grand man and after a hundred thousand dollars and and questionable results i didn't go holy crap that's a problem i'm a little irritated if i took my car to a mechanic and a hundred thousand dollars later it still didn't turn on i would be pissed off i'd be on yelp but i would go to retreats and therapists and psychologists questionable results and like it didn't bother me that's what i'm pointing to right but also i do think it's fair to say I'll just say this. We were passionate about one thing and one thing only, which was a permanent solution. That's all we cared about. And because that was our only focus, I believe we were much more likely to find it because it's all we wanted and it's all we cared about. And we were measuring and tracking it the whole time to know what didn't work and what did work. And when I say what worked, I mean your fear and anxiety levels went down and stayed down. Because not all help is the same. You can help someone feel chill for five minutes, 10 minutes. Meditation will do that. But our measurement of success, we were constantly measuring. And building a system was to track where the people's levels going down steadily, consistently. And when they the, the, the symptom went away, it stayed away. That's what we were focused on. And I think that's why we found it. Okay. So we got people listening to this who are saying, okay, this sounds great. I'm not asking you to disclose any, you know, s specific details, but you got to give us something. What did you do that was different? How did you approach this that was different from uh, the previous therapies you had experienced? Excellent question. Okay, there's two answers. And again, I want to share this through the perspective of not diminishing what other people are doing, just highlighting why what we do is more effective, okay? And when I talk about mental health professionals or therapists, I'm talking in the trend. I'm sure there are exceptions, but let's just, you know, it, it, it's helpful to look at trends. So we looked at things and we looked at where do people get fast, efficient, permanent results? Well, ideally a good mechanic, a good contractor, maybe a gardener, maybe a dentist. And we said, they're getting fast, consistent results. Why? Like, what's going on there? So let me ask you, if you need a root canal and you go to a dentist, do they use one or two tools or do, you, do they have multiple tools that are designed to work together to get the job done? 
my guess is the latter. Yeah. 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 There's a systems approach. They've been trained in this system of how to open up a tooth in a way that's not too painful, clean out the infection, pack it in with something, and make it better. And they and you can see the tools on their thing. It's a specific toolkit. There's no there's not a chainsaw there. There's not a bulldozer there. There's no hammers. It's a, spe a specific toolkit that's an optimized over a while to get the job done. Now, generally speaking, my experience, but can you see it's some people's experience that when we go looking for help with procrastination, anxiety, PTSD, we usually will learn from somebody maybe one technique or one tool or sort of one insight from one person. And then we'll kind of run over here and we'll learn one tool and one technique and one insight from another person. We saw that to turn this around, you needed a complete holistic set of tools that is designed to work together. That's what we've developed is a system. And can you see that most people out there seeking help don't get a system of tools that are designed to work together. They're usually going from person to person, getting one or two tools here, trying this and trying that. Can you see the difference? I do see the difference. Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, you know, uh, many therapists try to, uh, I mean, if they're, if they're interested in learning about trauma, there are many mo different modalities, right? And it's very difficult to be uh, efficient in several different modalities. And I think that's what you're speaking to, right? There might be one therapist who is good, who is specialized in IFS or another therapist who specializes in EMDR. Some therapists might have a, a larger toolkit, but th I think those are the exception. Yeah. And that may be why they, they've got something that they've seen helps. They're passionate about it and they teach it. Nothing wrong with that. The downside is if what needs to happen is a full set of tools that works together to get the job done, it's problematic. Like if you, if you, if, you know, if there's a painter and they have a paintbrush, you know, and you say, Hey, can you help me rebuild my house? And they say, well, I've got a paintbrush. And they're like, I need a hammer. I need screwdrivers. I need shovels. So I'm telling your audience, you probably went to well-intentioned people that were pretty good at a couple tools and techniques that will help you manage things. What we saw got us the results was a com complementary set of tools that work together in tandem. That's why we're able to solve it. There's no magical thing. It's just a systems approach. The second thing is, is usually whenever we go to do something, whether it's baking, whether it's gardening, when we're trying to create real change to something, usually what we get is instructions. What to do, in what order, for how long. That's what a recipe is. If you wanna make chocolate chip cookies and you ask someone, they don't just hand you flour and eggs and say, good luck. You wouldn't know what to do, what order, what goes first. Do I do do I put the egg in the oven first or do I put or oh I got to mix them first then I put them in the oven. Well how long do I put them in the oven at what temperature? If you even if you have all the tools if you don't have the instructions, the timing, the repetition and the order, it's the difference between a burnt cracker and a three layer wedding cake. So the usually people are going to the experts, getting some tools and techniques and they're like, "Here you go. Good luck." Our system works because as you're going through it, it's laid out very intentionally. On this day, do this, this amount of times, in this order for this long. Day two, do this, then do that, then do this. And we've been testing and optimizing the program to get the order and the sequence and the timing just right, such that if you work the steps, you get the results. That's how we get a 90% success rate. We've been testing this. So that's the other, it, there's no special insight that we saw. It was that to solve this, you need a set of tools and you need specific instructions on how to get the job done. And if you don't have that, you have what I had is you end up very confused. A lot of your listeners know a lot. They know a lot of tools and insights and modalities. But man, it was almost like the more I learned, the more confused I felt. And so in our program, our system, it takes the guesswork out. You don't have to figure anything out. You need to show up every day and we'll take out the guesswork because we know you're confused. Just work the steps and get the results. So let me just remind everyone, I'm speaking with Daniel Packard of Permanent Anxiety Solutions. Okay, so we've got listeners of the podcast who are saying, all right, you know, I've got anxiety. I've got a lot of fear and or trauma. I'm going to go to your website 
I'm interested in, you know, checking you out and joining. What am I going to find? What am I going to see? Not much. <laughs> um, what you're going to find is an option to talk to me and you're going to get a basic outline of our program, the structure, how, it, how, how it's laid out, the basic modules, what you do each day, what you're responsible for. The reason we don't put too much there is because when I first developed this with my team, we figured out a way for people to be free of this stuff. And then when we saw how skeptical people we were, were people were, we thought what we've decided is innovative and we couldn't get people to try it. And we found out people were too skeptical because it sounds too good to be true. Be free of this stuff. People have had it their whole lives. And I'm some rando on the internet saying I, and plus they've been burned in the past with people and coaches over promising and under delivering. So this gentleman came to me, his name was Jonathan. Uh, he had crippling anxiety and panic attacks. And he met somebody at a party who used to have crippling anxiety and panic attacks. And this person told Jonathan about what we do. So he reaches out to us and he says, I'd like some help. I said, great. And logically, he wanted his anxiety and panic attacks gone. But he's like, I just don't think this is going to work. And, and I understood why everything else had failed him. And also now he felt broken and like he's going to fail. Right. So he was, he was on the verge of taking his own life. And I just said, look, man, just do the program. Just, just do, do it. When it works, if you want to pay me at the end, I don't care. Just here, take the medicine. And he said, what? I said, just do it. So because there was no risk, he did it. And about four weeks in, his, anxiety, his panic attacks went away in the first week. And his anxiety was down by about 70% by week four. And he said, I just want to thank you for giving me my life back. My wife says thank you for giving me her husband back. But also thank you for letting me try it because I wouldn't have done it. And that gave birth to our no change, no charge guarantee, which is when you work with us, you don't pay at the beginning. You only pay at the end when you get results. Now, why am I bringing this up? One, because that's incredible. Because if your audience is listening to me, they're thinking, this, this, you can't get rid of this stuff quickly. Really? If you work with us, you only pay at the end when you have measurable results. So this is an answer to your website question. We don't put a lot on the website because this offer that I'm telling you right now, we have a system to solve this. And if it doesn't work, you don't pay. That's the most important information. If that doesn't grab you, if that doesn't motivate you, don't work with us. No, that, so, that, hold on a second. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. That's very intriguing. But my question wasn't so much a website question. It was more of a program. So is this an online thing? Is it a group, live group thing? Is this last six months? W what is the program? Totally fair. So... Uh, it's a six-week online program. Everything is automated. That was part of the gift to the world is we wanted to make it affordable and accessible around the world so you don't need to talk to anybody one-on-one. -on -one. So there are video. There's four modules. Each module is 10 days long. Each module, it's the basic same structure. You have a 90-minute video that's going to teach you the theory. Then you have a 30-minute video that teaches you the exercise you'll be doing. Then four times a day for five minutes minimum, you apply this exercise that mechanically is addressing the root cause of what's creating the problem. And it's through that constant repetition that's healing the root cause, but you're also building the daily habit. Also in the, in the course, because we don't want people to try and fail, there's a huge library of audio recordings taken from my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with people where I'm answering basic questions to people so that as you go through the program, when you have a question, it's already been answered and you don't get stuck. We do not want people to fail. So that's kind of what's in the program. That's the basics. But I want to explain, I guess, your audience still wants to know what it is because they're like, well, do I have a, a religious awakening? Do I lick, lick a psychedelic frog? Like, what is it? Like, what's in the videos? So just to give some context of what mechanical means, I want to give you and your audience sort of an inner mechanical lesson on what they're feeling and experiencing. It'll give them sort of a sample of what we're doing before they do it. Does that, is that okay? Sure. Okay. So again, I'm going to explain to you our take on human struggle, it's a theory. Now, it's not just theory. It's what we've used to solve things at 90%. But from your audience's perspective, it's a theory. But just know this theory is what allowed me to be free of this completely. And it's what allows us to have a 90% success rate. And 
allows us to only get paid when we get results. So this is solid theory. This isn't just like, I, I didn't just wake up, smoke, get high and be like, oh my God, you know what I think anxiety is? I think anxiety, this, no, this has been tested. So essentially what's going on is that if you look underneath almost every human struggle, procrastination, overthinking, anxiety, trauma, fear, fear of rejection, fear of social situations. Mechanically, those are symptoms. They are symptoms of not feeling safe from within. Just not feeling safe. You of all people understand this because you work in trauma. Can you see that if you don't feel safe, it's gonna create fear and then if you have that fear, it may lead to procrastination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Can you see that if you don't feel safe inside, something can happen on the outside, maybe a little bit of stress, a little bit of challenge. But instead of just feeling stress, if you don't feel safe inside, you're going to feel it at a much higher level because you're not stable and solid. And you're going to feel, quote unquote, anxious. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, sure. If you don't feel safe inside... Your mind follows your body because your mind is a problem-solving tool to get the body what it wants. When first you feel hunger in the body, and then the mind says, oh, we're hungry. Where should we order food? So if you feel unsafe in the body, your mind thinks there's a problem and will start spinning and catastrophizing, thinking there's a problem to solve. So can you see that on some level, people aren't overthinkers such that more so anxiety, uh, overthinking is a symptom of not feeling safe? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So mechanically, people don't have anxiety. Mechanically, people aren't procrastinators. Mo people don't have PTSD. That's, that's naming a cluster of behaviors, but I'm saying it's from feeling unsafe from within. Mechanical. Okay, so then the next question your audience wants to know is, why the heck do I feel unsafe? Right? Like, why, why did this small thing make me feel like I'm going to die? Why, when I'm sitting at home trying to Netflix and chill, and does it feel like there's a tiger in the room? Why? Why am I so afraid? And the answer is it's mechanical. And you and I did this exercise, sort of a longer version already, but I'll condense it for your audience, okay? So we're going to do a little role play here. And in this role play, we're friends, okay? And when I talk to you, Guy, I'm also talking to your audience. What I'm trying to show you here is that feeling safe and feeling unsafe is not complicated or mysterious. It's very mechanical. And if it's mechanical, it means it's solvable. So let's say we're friends. And all of a sudden, every day, I start to treat you like crap. And I mean to you, I'm unkind to you, I don't give a crap about you. I know what you need and I know I'm not there for you. I put everybody else ahead of you. I, I know what scares you and I do it anyway. And when I see you in trouble, I, I leave you alone and I don't care. If I do that every day, are you going to feel safe and calm around me or unsafe and anxious? Yeah, the latter, of course. Well, yeah, yeah of course, because it's mechanical. It's like, if you do this, I'm going to feel that way. Right. Okay, so next level, just basic mechanics, just showing your audience that maybe this is simpler. On the count of three, I want you, Guy, and your audience to say, the way you're treating me is leave me feeling unsafe. Okay? So on the count of three, just say the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. One, two, three. The way you're treating me, leaving me feeling unsafe. What is wrong with you? Why do you feel this way? Seriously. You're fine. Chill out, man. And also your feelings, whatever's going on with you, keep it away from me. I'm trying to get stuff done and your feelings and whatever this is, is bothering me and it's annoying and it needs to stop. So whatever you're struggling with, get away from me. You're on your own. Does that leave you feeling more unsafe and more anxious or more calm and safe? Right. I'm hanging up. You're hanging up. I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> no. Right. No, you don't. But can you see if I treat you that way, mechanically, you're going to feel unsafe? Sure. So I'm not doing this to traumatize anyone, and I'm sorry. I know a lot of you are saying, Daniel, you're an incredible actor. You must have had one semester of acting. Uh, to pull. I, I hate to do that to you. It's for the sake of science. What I'm trying to show is if certain things happen, your body will feel unsafe. Once you feel unsafe, that can show up as procrastination, anxiety, 
PTSD, OCD, ADHD. Okay. Now, the beauty of mechanics is if you understand the mechanics of, of how to move something in one direction, you know the mechanics of how to move something in, in another direction. If you know the mechanics of how to lose weight, which is you burn more calories than you eat, with the exact same theory, you know how to gain weight, which is you eat more calories than you burn. So we figured out what's making people anxious and how and feeling unsafe and how to help them feel safe. And here's why. In this role play, we're in a friend relationship. But is it fair to say that you're also in a relationship with, your, with yourself? Definitely. Definitely. And is it fair to say that sometimes, maybe even daily, you're not so loving and caring to yourself? Without a doubt. I think a lot of us are like that. Yes. Your audience knows it. Your audience knows they're hard on themselves, the perfectionism, the pressure. Your audience already knows that. What your audience doesn't know, and this is what the data revealed, those daily acts of not being loving and kind to yourself have been building for years and years and years and have basically made you feel untrusting and unsafe in your own body. That's where the unsafety is coming from, not the outside world, but the inside world from two things. One is an accumulation over time, meaning 10 to 20, 10 to 30 times a day, people do this. It's been building and building and building and building. But also it's still going on right under people's noses. 10 to 30 times a day, they're doing things that are basically re scaring themselves and leaving them feeling unsafe. And so if you're still doing it to yourself every day, can you understand that no meditation, no insight, no tip or tool is going to get rid of the symptom because what's causing the problem, you're still doing every day. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So the downside is, again, this is what we saw from the data and working with 3,000 people. There's a direct mechanical link between these small, we call them micro neglects that people are doing to themselves every day. And just like if you neglect your diet, years later, you can end up with a heart attack. If you neglect brushing and teeth, eventually it's going to accumulate and you can need a root canal. What we didn't see is this accumulated neglect of your feelings has been building and building and building and mechanically causing this feeling on safety. And nobody's seeing that. And that's why they're not able to address it and get rid of it. But if we want to turn this around quickly, why is it good news to think, whoa, what if what I'm feeling is just a symptom of the little daily actions that I've been treating myself? If we want to turn this around and solve it, why is that good news? Why is that good news? Because it's, I mean, just tangible, right? It's, we can take action on it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. A lot of times people get told concepts like believe in yourself. Well, what the F does that mean? Like, that's not an actionable step or, you know, let it go. What, what's the it? How do I, what, 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 what? But when someone's overweight, they can take actionable steps every day of like eat more salads and less potato chips. It's all actionable. So the program is based on little, simple, actionable steps that accumulate over time such that you feel safe measurably. When you feel safe from within, the symptom goes away and doesn't come back. Now, you and I did a little sort of mini version of this uh, before this call. And I want, and I'm just curious because what I'm talking about is theoretical to your audience, but just if you, if you feel comfortable, tell them what was your experience uh, of what we did and if there, and if there was any value in it that you saw. Yeah, I will. I mean, I, I, yeah. And I, I want to just be mindful of the time here because we're kind of closing down, but um it, w it was very powerful to me. We did this uh, experience where it invited me to look at how I was, uh, the way I, the way in which I was speaking to myself in a, in a many times over the course of the day, in a not so positive way. And you can feel it. You can feel how those add up. And we weren't oftentimes not even aware of it. That's the key. You're not aware of it. If you're unaware of calories, you'll end up obese. The, no one's aware of this simple thing. And when we did our exercise, I remember your the, the, the fear level that you felt went from an eight to a five. 
from a little, you know, four minute exercise. But then remember, I asked you, I said, hey, remember that thing that makes you anxious? Try to be anxious about it again. And you sort of smiled and you said, huh, it's it's harder. It's like right, it, it's right. not as scary. You remember right. that part? Yeah, I do. I do. That that. Yeah, that's very valuable. I mean, I think what you're doing is I'm just thinking if therapists, just regular therapists didn't charge their clients until they saw results, no one would get paid. Thank you for admitting that. I, I mean, don't want to say of them, it. A lot, let me, I'm not going to say all of them, none of them, but right. I, mean, I don't want to make a generalization, but a lot of them wouldn't because it, it, we're led to believe that all of this takes a long time and should take a long time. I want to truly honor your honesty around this topic because people have told me, hey, when my clients go through and six weeks after years of therapy, they didn't get it. It's gone in six weeks. They've asked me, why the heck didn't these experts see it? And I said, I don't know what's in anybody's heart, but I think it's just the environment that they are trained in. It's just the, it's the acceptable way to do things. And what we did was innovative. And, and Guy, it was, a, it was so much hard work. You have a good business going. You help people. They pay you. You pay bills. You raise your kids. I dropped everything for eight years. I worked with addicts in South Africa for two years. Like, it was so much work, man. And I was possessed by solving it. But if you're a therapist or a psychologist and, you, and you're, you're helping people and you're making decent money, why work this hard? So it's not that you don't care. But I will say we were passionately focused about solving it. And because we were outsiders of this industry, we could leave the old, the old guard behind and try something new. And also the key is, I don't want people thinking like, oh, wait, so I'm just going to like talk to myself and my anxiety is going to go away. What? So I'm just going to like do some affirmation. No, this was just a proof of concept to show you that it's possible. The secret sauce is not any one particular thing. It's the system with the set of tools and the instructions in just the right order. That's why when people say, how can you, how can you, Guarantee results. It's because we've been testing the system. It's the system that gets results. And this is why this is great for your audience. A lot of your audience feels too broken. We don't help nearly as enough people because they're not motivated to work with us because unconsciously they believe I've already tried this and I've failed and it made me feel worse. So why would I try your thing again? And what I want to tell your audience is I get it. Right. But the system just works. So if it's like saying... Oh, I broke my bone. And I say, go to the doctor and, I'll, and they'll put a cast on it. And you're like, no, I'm too broken to be fixed. No, my childhood. No, no, no. If it's mechanical and it's a system that works, it's going to work. So to all you out there who think you're too broken to be fixed, we are so confident that if you do our program, you do not pay a penny to the end. And we do that for two reasons. One is otherwise we won't be able to help people because they're too skeptical. But also we do not want you to fail. We want you to succeed, but more than anything, we do not want to fail and make you feel worse. So the program, the system has been optimized so that you can not fail. That said, as good as this sounds, Guy, before I go, almost nobody on your podcast is going to want to work with us. Because what we've found is change is scary. And when you've had this a long time, logically people want it gone but have you seen that people almost are, are almost afraid to let go of what holds them back have you seen that of course yeah yeah so i'm telling you we have a program 90 percent success rate if it doesn't work you don't pay we're with you every step of the way we won't that logically sounds great but the people that work with us are skeptical but have an open mind and also, they have something in their life that they want bad enough that their limitation is keeping them from. Because you need motivation to do this. So to the one in a thousand people that's out there to listen to this, if whatever you're holding back is keeping you from what you want, if you want to be more successful at work, if you want a more loving relationship, if you want to feel comfortable in your own skin, if you want to wake up each morning feeling energized and looking forward to the day, if you want to be a better parent, a better spouse, if you just want to do what you love... If that motivation is there, you, that's who should reach out to us because that's what we do. We're not in the anxiety fear business. We are giving people the life they deserve business, and that takes motivation. So to you, to you one in a thousand people out there who are like, I want that life, and I'm willing to change to do it, you're who we want to help. All right. So as, as we kind of wind down here, 
Um, how do those people get in contact with you? Well, I like things simple and mechanical. So my name, my name is Daniel Packard. Just go to mechanic, go to danielpackard.com. Okay. You can get some basic information on the program just to fill in the blanks. And then you can sign up to have a call with me. And when we have a call, uh, two things when you can ask some questions, you know, you want to feel informed, like, what is this? What does it look like? You can find out more about our, our no change, no charge guarantee. Like, how does that work? And how do we measure and all that stuff? How do we know you get results? And then also, as we're talking, I'm just double checking for sure that the program is going to work for you. A, to protect us because we only get paid at the end. But also, the last thing we want anybody to do is try and fail. So on the call, sure. I'm making sure you're a good candidate for the program. Almost everybody is, but of I need course. to double check for both of our sake. So if you like what you're hearing, you want to learn more, and you want to book a free call with me to see if this is a good fit for you, danielpackard.com. Awesome. All right, Daniel, excited to get this out there. We'll be in touch and uh, super inspiring, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Right, thank you to your audience. Bye. Take care.